tonight, division on Inauguration Day, celebrations and protests, not just in D.C., but Central Florida as well. Scenes from the campaign have now carried over into the start of the Trump administration. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ginger Gadsden. And I'm Lisa Bell. Despite the animosity, President Donald Trump is already getting to work. We have team coverage tonight, starting with our co-anchor, Matt Austin. He is live in Washington, D.C. And Matt, the tone there really depends on where you are. Well, tonight, yeah, it has to do with where you are and who you are. You could be protesting tonight or you could be partying tonight. And in just a moment, I'm going to show you what is keeping the protesters away from the partiers. You're not going to believe this. First, though, I want to update you on some information just coming in tonight on the Trump administration. And they are getting to work already. Let me show you this. Mr. Trump's cabinet officially forming tonight. Confirmations for both his secretary of defense, James Mattis, and secretary of Homeland Security, retired General John. Kelly. They were both sworn in tonight by Vice President Mike Pence. Now, once tonight's inaugural parade wrapped up, the first family hit the social scene for three presidential balls. The new president and first lady taking some time to spend with supporters. And tonight I told my crew, I said, hey, Cinderella, get ready. We're going to a ball tonight, even though we were denied access to all of them. So how do you get into a ball that President Trump is going to be at tonight. Well, this is the third ball right on this road here. But to get here, you have to get past these not one, but two sand filled dump trucks. And if you say, oh, well, you know, you could drive your car around on the sidewalk to get past here. Well, no, these concrete barriers, which are temporarily in place, keep you from doing that. And it doesn't end here. So let me show you some video of what happens once you get past these trucks. OK, there's the National Building Museum, which is where this event is held tonight. You can see flashing lights all over the place. There are military members armed to the teeth, police officers there, and a temporary fence, a steel fence outlining the entire place so you cannot go near it. And somehow I was able to yell past the fence to a Navy man from Florida who was there at the ball with his wife Here's what they had to say about the night. Uh, what is it like trying to get through all this security and deal with all the roads? It's, it's difficult uh, commuting here. We, just, uh, we decided not to take Metro and uh, drive, and that uh, proved to be not a good idea. Yeah, you definitely want to take the Metro. We also asked that couple if they had any dealings with protesters tonight. They said they haven't seen anything. They have been highly insulated, as you can see from what I've just shown you, uh, from the protesters. And let me show you, though, it has been a very busy evening. Protesters uh, did some damage today. 217 of them were arrested. Six police officers were injured in all of this. A limo was set on fire. Windows were broken out. Trash cans were knocked over. It was an ugly scene for a while, but fortunately now, even though you can hear how loud it is in the police sirens in D.C., the protests certainly have calmed down. But at 11 o'clock at night during my live shot here, this is what it's like trying to get around D.C. It is virtually impossible. The metro, which is the subway system around here, is the only way to do it. And ladies, I'm about to jump on that thing and get back to my hotel room. So I'm going to send it back to you. All right, Matt. Thank you. Matt Austin reporting live for us in Washington, D.C.